Welcome, David, to the NAM Jam. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks now, for coming. This, you've done this one before? I think this is our fourth year doing it with Neil Turbin and myself and Michelangelo Badio. And uh, Neil started it with Michael three years previous to that. So I think that this is the seventh or eighth year. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really cool, man. It gets bigger every year. And um, we're thrilled this year, you know. Last year was pretty packed. and. This year we've got a, a way better lineup, and we've got guys from White Snake and Alice Cooper. We've got the the amazing Michelangelo Badio. We've got uh, guys like Xander Demos. You know, we've got uh, a lot of great players. Perry Nielsen from Scar Symmetry, and it's gonna rock. So it kind of grows word of mouth every year. People hear about yeah. it, they want to be a part of it. It's one of those um, traditions, you know, like the sort of the NAM kickoff, if you will, you know, like, I mean, we have all these great shows at the NAM season, you know, we've got Bonzo Bash, we've got uh, all these other shows, and then this year there's Randy Rhodes Remembered, and so that's what's so cool about NAM is um, everybody can come and see all the great players that they love, and it's great, that's why we love it. That's beautiful. So now how many years have you been playing guitar? I'm 30 <laughs> years young. Okay. I'm starting to get up there. and. Uh, like a Appendage of, of your your body. Yeah, right. right I, yeah, I think it's 17 years for me now. So I'm I'm very blessed to have found the guitar. You know, like uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a pro baseball player, and then uh, my sister started getting me into records, and I was like, dude, you know. So I bought my first guitar and just never looked back. You know. So. Now, what were some of those first records you heard that blew your head off? You know what? I used to make fun of her. I was like, why do you waste your allowance on music? And she was, uh, she said, here, check this out, check that out, check this out. The first one that really blew my head off actually was a classical tape by this guy, Mahler, Gustav Mahler. Now, I grew up in the South, uh, in a small town, and uh, hearing his stuff was like, um, like something from outer space. But then the first rock band that really blew my head off was Metallica. I saw Metallica on Beavis and Butthead, and I was like, oh my God. And, um, and then I started to hang with kind of the rock kids, you know, and, I, and they got me into Kiss and Pantera and Megadeth and uh, Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind by Iron Maiden. My buddy said, dude, check this out. And I went home and I was like, oh. like I had found the Holy Grail or something, you know, so. Right. Yeah, so metal changed my life, man. And um, it's ingrained in my DNA, so. So the skies parted and, and, and the seas opened up and yeah. there was the world of metal. Absolutely. It's amazing. Now, for those that have never been to NAMM, explain that to the people out there. How incredible for a musician or anyone into musical gear this event is. I think of NAMM as the, um, it's the Super Bowl of the music products industry. And what's cool about it is all of us can, from all different walks of life, from all different ages, metal, jazz, blues, country, we all get together and we can talk about the stuff that we love. And it's beautiful, you know, it's, uh, it's really cool. And what I love about it is, you know, we've got our thing tonight. I mean, when are you ever going to get to see Derek St. Holmes from Ted Nugent jam with Michelangelo Beatty? I mean, like, that's, like, so cool. And then tomorrow I'm going to see Rat. And then the next night I'm seeing, uh, you know, Guthrie Govan and Jeff Loomis. And so it's, like, it's really cool. It's just, it runs the gamut, you know. And then I get to see old buddies and, you know, I get to meet guys like Bootsy Collins and, I mean, all the legends. So it's a really special time. Um, so it's fun. Yeah, so unlike the record business where it's a whole other industry, this yeah. is really the musicians. Yeah, these it's are the, the musicians. behind the bands kind of thing. Yeah, guys looking for gigs, guys looking for session work, guys uh, networking, uh, getting endorsements, and uh, just getting your name out there, you know. Like, um, you can be a great player. You know, there are 14-year-old kids in Alabama who are amazing, but you're never going to hear about them if they don't know how to promote themselves. And, and NAM is a great opportunity for people to um, get out there and show what they got and, and make friends and that sort of thing. Because the music business, it's 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 who you know, but more importantly, it's who knows you, right? So, I mean, it's like, it's just a good time to get together and uh, celebrate music, which gives us so much, you know, like, I, I don't know where I'd be without music, man. Yeah. Probably wouldn't be alive right now. So, I'm grateful every day. Well, with so many problems in the world, music seems to be a great escape or something that they, young people can, not only dedicate themselves to, but learn some life skills. You yeah, know, you know, I just dedication. Absolutely, yeah. I just I just went to Mexico City uh, for the first time to do clinics and concerts, and that's such an eye-opening thing, man. Because they don't get a lot of stuff down there, and when they do, they go crazy. So it's like they love metal, and they we you know we did a show, and uh, we didn't go on until after midnight. You know, in Boston or New York, people would be like, "Oh, it's midnight, I'm out of here." And, you know, they stayed and partied with us till four in the morning. It was great. 
Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's really you cool. You see this a universal language, and, and of course, what comes from America and so much that comes from L.A. influences yeah. the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the, what, what happened right here on the Sunset Strip all those years ago, it still resonates with people, and, and that's why it's kind of cool to be in this venue. This venue, uh, it has a it has a cool energy, you know. It's uh, the Doors played here, Guns N' Roses, Molly Crew, Van Halen, yeah. yeah, you know, Metallica, everybody yeah. played here. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, I love it. Constantly immortalized in those videos, it's fixed on my heart. Yeah, so, right. You know what, what was the Van Halen video they did here? Uh, Oh, man. Yeah, I can't remember which Sandy one. Sandy joined. It was just incredible. Yeah, and like in Guns N' Roses and Wasp, but I mean, they used to have apartments yeah, right oh, up the yeah. street, you know, so it's kind of cool. The legendary on the crew apartment, three doors up here. Yeah. <laughs> the you can only imagine that backstage party moving north a couple doors. Yeah. Incredible. So now, as you've gotten into this as a veteran, what, what do you get out of this? The, the Nam Jam and the whole Nam experience, what do you go home with every year? What do I go home from every year? Um, for me, it's a cool way to give back to music that has given me so much. You know, people think we make a million dollars doing this show, and we don't. Man. You know, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, but for me, it's like like young artists like Annie Grunwald from Form Formless. She's in the other room warming up here. She's a great player. We're giving her an opportunity to really shine in, in front of some big. You know, she's playing with Derek St. Holmes and all these guys all the way to guys like Neil Turbin who've been doing it for 30 years, you know, so it's um, it's exciting, you know, to give people a chance to uh, rock out and show what they got, you know, and so I get a lot of pride out of it, and um, everything I do really, I like to help artists, I get artists NAM badge, you know, badges, I, I, uh, and I do celebrity interviews for Guitar World, and Revolver, and uh, Guitar Aficionado, and so I just, you know, everything in my life is all music all the time. You can always learn so, something from somebody else. Yeah, so it, you know, I like to celebrate that spirit of music. And, uh, right. you know, I love it. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, you know, so many people put down this younger generation that they don't want to put in the dudes. They, they'll jump on oh, guitar, yeah. you know, guitar teach, hero, but they yeah. won't learn their instrument. What advice would you give to a young person out there that really wants to, you know, shine in this industry or, or really build their own style or sound? Well, here's my advice. I, I teach for a living. And, um, you know, a lot of my income is just teaching, and I love it. I teach at several schools. I teach people all over the world on Skype. I teach people that come to my house, you know. And uh, what I would say, I get all these kids who come in, and they're like, dude, I want to play like Black Felt Brides, or I want to play like this, or I want to play, and they want to do all these sweep arpeggios right out of the gate. And I'm like, dude. You need to go back to Sabbath. You need to go back to Maiden. You need to go back to Zeppelin, Metallica, Megadeth. If you can't play that stuff, how are you going to play all this other stuff? And also, go to what they, they learned on. Yeah, go back to the blues, man. Go back to the masters. Learn all of it. And you know, there was a scientist or somebody who wrote a book, and it's 10,000 hours of practice to master something. So you have to have that dedication. And if you don't have that dedication, there's not really any room for you in this thing. Yeah, that's there's 10 minutes, over. that's 10,000 hours. Yeah, there's a lot of guys. Oh, yeah, I'm getting rammed on over um, there's a lot of guys who will put in that time. So, I mean, if you're not willing to put in the time, don't waste your time. Um, do it for fun, you know? If you want to do it for a career, put everything you got into it. And don't do it for the money, man. You know, don't take some shitty gig that you don't like just to make money. Do, do what you love, and you'll be happy, you know? Because it's not about the money. You know, money can't buy happiness. If you're not having fun doing this, what are you doing? What's the point? So, um, so that's my advice. Practice, practice, and you know, yeah, learn from the masters. That's amazing. Put your so, heart into it. Yeah. So to grow up listening to Derek St. Holmes singing Stranglehold and Hey Baby, Motor City and, uh, Man Man. Turn It Up. Turn It Up is one of my favorite songs in the whole world. Yeah. You know, and so like to be playing that with, uh, to be playing some of these songs with Derek, it's great. And uh, Did you guys rehearse? You know what? We haven't. Okay. You know, yeah, I mean, we're just we're, we're just all pros, and we're getting up there cold and rocking it. No net, just jumping out of yeah. the plane. And yeah, live without a net, like Van Halen, right? <laughs> Hanging on to the guitar. Yeah, man. That's beautiful. We're here at the Whiskey Go-Go in lovely West Hollywood, California, where the Doors, Metallica, Motley Crue, you know, you name it, have played. And we're hanging out with Michael Angelo Badio, Derrickson Holmes, all these great players for NAM Metal Jam 2014.